Morning peeps, good morning everyone, how's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. Tonight's the night peeps, tonight is the night. Look at me overhyping this thing like it's AJ versus Fury. But look, a lot of people have been waiting for this one, Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. It's what, two years in the making and I can't wait for it, I'm very excited. Remember we are doing a live watch along at eight o'clock so make sure you join me. Um, look, we'll talk about that in a minute. I do want to talk about an event I was at yesterday. Um, I was at the Floyd Mayweather Aaron Chalmers exhibition fight. Uh, shout out to Spencer Fearing for hooking me up with a couple of tickets. Um, it was awful. It was awful. And I feel like, I feel like I'm sounding ungrateful because I got free tickets, but it was bad. It really was. Um, I don't know how many were in there in the end. I'm going to say about three and a half, four thousand. And I do wonder, look, Floyd probably wouldn't care, but I do wonder if that hurts your ego a little bit. You're Floyd Money Mayweather. I do wonder if coming out to, I was going to say a half empty arena, it wasn't a half, a fifth. I do wonder if that kind of plays with his ego just a little bit. He walked out to the ring, I'm not joking, with about 50 people. I'm, I, I kid you not, about 50 people. And I'm like, what is this? Honestly, um, but yeah, the, the whole event, I got there pretty late. I was able to catch the co-main event, the two ladies fighting. What is that? <laughs> and I, I was watching it thinking, is this how people view misfits? <laughs> That's why I was watching it. I was thinking, before I go into it too much, I wonder if this is how the hardcore boxing fans view misfits. Obviously, I'm working on the event, so I don't see it like that. But I will say this, misfits, the events are packed. The atmosphere is a lot better and the fights are somewhat better. They, they are, they're somewhat better. Um, that yesterday was just, I don't know, I'm not sure. Again, I think I said this on yesterday's video, whoever put on that event financially, they've taken a very, very big hit. It wouldn't have done great numbers on pay-per-view, it just wouldn't. I mean, unless they were charging a £10 or, you know, something along those lines, I don't think people are paying big money to see it. Um, yeah, just, just overall disappointing, disappointing. That, that that event at the Indigo would have been good because it would have been packed, right? It would have been near packed. I don't know what the Indigo um, capacity is. Let's have a quick look. Okay, um, 2,800. Perfect, perfect, right? And that would have cost a fraction of the O2. Um, but obviously, I get it. It's Floyd. You think you're going to do good numbers. But there must be a point where it's like, okay, this ain't going to work. Maybe we scrap this venue. I don't know what the fine is, but maybe you take that hit. But I mean, look, Floyd yesterday. You know, as I was watching Floyd, I will say this. Floyd weighed in at 155 pounds. That means Floyd was always, throughout his career, fighting way above his weight. Like, way above it. I mean, for you to retire, and I know... He's still relatively in good shape. But for you to retire and still weigh in at 155 is in, insane. It really is. Um, but I was watching him yesterday thinking, like, would Floyd still beat some guys? You know, what I mean? I'm not joking. That's what I was watching. Because there was a time yesterday where Aaron Chalmers tried to step it up on Floyd. And Floyd just took it to another level. Decided, okay, no, no, one second. You're trying to step up with me. I'm going to go. And I was thinking, like... Surely Floyd still beats some pros. I'm not, don't, I'm not talking top guys. I'm not talking that, but I'm talking guys that, you know, maybe novices, 10 and 0 guys. Like surely Floyd can turn it up on them. But um, yeah, Floyd's fight was somewhat entertaining just because Aaron Chalmers was actually trying to take his head off. It wasn't like Deji that Floyd fought a few months ago who was almost happy to be in there. Aaron Chalmers was trying to kill him. Uh, and that sort of made Floyd sort of, put on, I wouldn't say his A game, but he was switched on. He was switched on. But anyway, look, enough of that. Let's talk about the event tonight, which I think will be a lot more entertaining. Um, some good fights on the undercard as well, most notably the uh, WBC Cruiserweight title fight between Ilunga Makabu and Badu Jack. We're going to cover that one. We're looking forward to that. Um, I think Makabu will get the job done. Um, Badu Jack actually lost his last fight for me. I was ringside, he lost it, but they gave it to him. Um, so there's not much left with Badu Jack. To be fair, there's not much left with Makabu. It's, Makabu is a strange one. Remember Makabu was going to fight Canelo. What happened with that? 
remember, like they done a little face off at the WBC exhibition, um, sorry, convention. And it was it. Canelo was going to try and become what a five weight world champion. Yeah, five weight world champion. Nothing happened. Strange. But you look, I think Makabu um, probably has a bit more left in the tank than Badu Jack. But the main event has everyone intrigued. Like people have gone back and forth on this one. People have reached out to me. This one, I know the main event is sort of big news. I've got a friend that never talks boxing with me, messaged me last night, said, Ade, I need your help. Who's winning this fight? I'm like, you're interested in this fight? So it's ticking a lot of boxes. They've promoted it well. Every single man and his dog seems to be in Saudi Arabia. Deontay Wilder turned up the other day. Obviously, look, they're getting paid to fly out. Their flights are being paid. Why not? Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, yeah, do you want to come to Saudi? We're going to pay you six figures, maybe. Uh, in fact, definitely. We're going to put you on a private jet. Yeah, sure. So everyone's out there. Uh, Derek Chisora seems to be loving life. Um, you know, one thing I did see, normally when Jake Paul fights these people, so whether it be Anderson Silva or Tyron Woodley, he's just larger than life. He has a massive entourage. He almost just seems to swallow his, his opponents. They almost become victims just before the fight. There was a picture of Tommy Fury with everyone. Like, literally, he's bought out everybody. And um, I don't know. I, I feel like Jake Paul's starting to understand the magnitude of this. I'm not trying to say... I, I don't, I'm not one of those people that read into body language and say, oh, he looks a bit nervous at the weigh-ins. But um, when you... When the person next to you is the heavyweight champion of the world, that must give you something. That must give you something. And it must also take something away from your opponent. It just has to. Your brother's Tyson Fury. He just has to. Your dad's the loudest human being I've ever met. Joseph Parker was in the group. Uh, David Adelaide. He's around boxing, boxing people, like real boxing people. I'm not trying to say that um, uh, Jaylion Love and all them lot aren't boxing people, but this is real. Uh, this is this is world champions in that group, you know. So, um, look, I, I'm going for Tommy Fury to get the job done. Um, Jake Paul has looked good. He has in his recent fights, but understand who he's been fighting. Like, I love Anderson Silva, I really do, but Anderson Silva's, what, 47, 48? Um, decent hands, but come on, 47, 48 is 47, 48. Tyron Woodley, do you know what I mean? So he's now fighting someone as big as him, naturally, because those other guys aren't really, especially Tyron Woodley anyway, as big as him, fresh, younger than him, and a boxer. That's kind of what it is. He's a boxer. Um, Tommy Fury has had amateur fights. I think he even won a couple of amateur titles. Not big ones, but he won. He's a boxer. The other guys aren't. So um, I think the boxer will prevail here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Jake Paul, you could say is now a boxer, right? He takes this seriously. He trains, eats, lives, and shits like a boxer. But um, he's never fought a boxer. This time he will. It would have been really, really good to have seen Jake Paul versus Hassim Rachman Jr., you know, just to see where he is. I think Rachman Jr. would have stopped him and hurt him, but it would have been good to see him against a proper boxer. Obviously, he spars boxers all the time, and I'm led to believe that he handles himself pretty well, but there's a difference between sparring and those big gloves and the smaller gloves of the real deal. So, um, yeah, look, can't wait for it. Looking forward to it. Again, we're going to get going at 8 o'clock. Hopefully the internet and the cameras are all working. Uh, TV's right in front of me. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited to say to BT Sports, take my 1995. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I don't mind it. I really don't. All right, let's um, have a look and see if there uh, is any news. Uh, Subriel Matthias uh, beat Jeremiah Ponce, stopped him in the fifth round of their 140-pound title fight. Uh, he's now, I think, the IBF, am I correct? Yeah, the IBF champion. I watched it briefly. I tried to stay up for it. I was literally like that, like trying to stay up, and I just couldn't. I fell asleep. But I have watched the highlights. Um, Subaru Matthias is a bit of a problem. He's a bit of a problem. He, uh, Jeremiah Ponce put it on him in the first one. It really steamed out and put it on him, and he just seemed to absorb those punches. And then really small, like small inside shots, like little counters, but those little counters seem to carry a lot of power. Like, what is his knockout record? Because he seemed to be able to hit really hard. And he he's going to be an issue for, for a lot of the 140-pounders. Okay. 
19 fights, 19 knockouts. <laughs> okay, problem, 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 problem. But um, look, we, um, sorry, 19 wins, 19 knockouts. Um, he's had one defeat, but that defeat he avenged. So he's beating everyone he's fought. Okay, that's what's around in the 140 pound division, people. That's what's around. It isn't just Jack Cattrall and Josh Taylor and Pro Gray and Teofimo Lopez. There are other names out there that will cause people problems. Um, what's this one? Uh, Ericsson Lubin, 160 is wide open. I feel like I can beat any of those dudes at the top. 160, so I don't know about it being wide open, dude. I mean, Yanni Beck's there. Um, Charlo's still there. GGG is there. I don't know about it being wide open, but there are, there are, I mean, look, it's an easier division to get a title shot at than the others, all right? 154 is undisputed, 168 is undisputed. So, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I wouldn't say it's wide open. Um, let's have a look. Uh, um, I saw something about Connor Ben. Let's have a look. I think I saw... Michael Benson tweets something about Conor Ben suing. Okay, here it is. Conor Ben is reportedly set to sue the British Boxing Board of Control for an expected 3.5 million in damages over their handling of the situation with his positive drugs test. Uh, it's claimed Ben is seeking his Chris Eubank Jr. purse and possibly also reputational damages. Okay. I, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, I have no idea how this is going to... I need to know more. I'm going to need to read it and find out a bit more. That's crazy. And by the way, what was his purse? That's crazy. But um, if Connor Ben is suing, then if I'm Chris Eubank, someone's getting a letter as well. Like someone's getting a letter. I don't, I don't care who it is. If I'm Chris Eubank... And I was, because I'm guessing Chris would have been maybe slightly the A-side in this fight. It was Chris Eubank versus Conor Ben. His name was first. He made sure I know that. I, Someone's getting, if I've made weight, if I've done all my job and I've not failed a drug test and Conor Ben is set in to sue and make money, then I'm sorry, someone's getting a letter, a big letter from a very good lawyer. Um, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. All right, let's, um, I think that is that. Dave Allen won yesterday, um, stopped Michael Bassett in the first round um, of a show in Malta. What was interesting about him fighting in Malta was I think he was refused a license. I stand, I stand corrected, but I think he was refused a license in Italy and then had that fight in Malta. Why was he refused a license in Italy? Was it because of a medical? He's now been calling out various names. I think he called out, um, who did he call out? Oh, my brain is scattered. But he called out a few. He called out a few. My brain's a bit tired. Sorry, people. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure of this new run that he's expecting to be on. But we'll see. All right, guys, girls, see you tonight, 8 o'clock. Don't be late. Peace.